Okay, I have uh, Sensei Al Lormore here with me, helping me with this. So first we start out with bass. I want to share with you the idea of bass. First, let's talk about bass itself. It's the idea of you want your knees spread wide and come around here. I want you to take a look at my feet. I want the top of your foot. I want that onto the mat. This is what allows you to put your butt closer to your heels and make it harder for you to sweep. When you do this with your toes and you put them into the mat, this is not pure base. This is base with mobility. I'll pull your knees to your chest. No, 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 no. Keep your ankles crossed, but pull your knees to your chest. I very easily lose my balance. But when I have my butt down, same thing, pull your knees to your chest. Much, much harder. So I want your knees spread wide, and I want your butt down and the uh, top of your feet. I want that onto the mat. Now, this is one method of doing bass. There are several other methods of doing bass. Um, and with what I teach, there's also a method of guard passing where you don't use bass at all. So uh, this is just the method we're going to cover today. Second part of the equation is posture. This is what you do with your arms as well as what you do with your chin. So first, let's talk about the chin. When I have my chin up and away from my lapel, Al, would you give me a collar choke, please? The basic palm up, palm up, and finish, please. Palm up, palm up, oh, yes. And I tap. Now, I put my chin over top. Same thing, please. So it's much, much more difficult for my training partner to finish me with a collar choke when I have my chin over top of my lapel. So the first part of posture involves me putting my chin over the lapel. Second part of posture is what I'm going to do with my hands. I'm going to take my right hand, grab a hold of the lapel just uh, below the nipple line, and depending on what I'm trying to accomplish will depend on where I put my elbow. My elbow, to prevent the arm lock, I want to put my tricep right here on the top of his uh, quadricep. Arm lock, please. Bringing that leg over the face. No space for that. Versus my elbow on the belly button. Same thing, please. Yes. That way I tapped. So when you grab a hold of the lapel, I want you to grab and place your elbow here for to stop the arm lock. To make it difficult for your training partner to put that left hand in, put the left hand in deep in the collar, you push your fist into the armpit. Yeah, but what if he spins for the arm lock? Then I put my elbow down. I really don't care if he gets this hand in deep and he beats me to the punch. He's not going to be able to get the right hand in deep because my chin is in the way. So when it comes to base and posture, I want my knees spread wide, I want my butt down, I want my chin over top of my collar, and I want my elbow right around this thigh. This is what makes me difficult to get swept, to get arm locked, and to get choked. This is part one. Part two, now we're gonna focus on uncrossing the ankles. There's several ways to uncross the ankles. Let me show you a couple that I use a lot. Uh, Sensei Al, please. So once I, I get to some form of posture, let's say I happen to do this form of posture, one way to uncross the ankles is to take the right knee. My right knee goes at the tailbone. Then my left knee goes back, not to the side where he can grab it, but it goes to the side and back. Then I'm going to push with both of my hands. And as I push with both of my hands, I arch my back. For most, this will uncross the ankles. For the few that don't, you arch your back. This is where the elbow comes into play. And now you use your elbow to uncross the ankle. 
Still, I have my knees spread wide for base, and still I have my right elbow over top of his uh, quadricep. And I also, obviously I can't do this while I'm teaching, but I would also have my chin over top of my lapel. So this is one way of uncrossing the ankles. Put the knee at the tailbone, the foot goes back, and then as I push with both hands, I arch my back, or I arch my back and put my elbow on the inside. Second way of uncrossing the ankles, same thing, but now I let go with the left hand and I reach behind me. I grab the cloth just below my butt and then I flare my elbow. Here, knee between the cheeks, leg goes out, I reach behind me, grab the cloth so that my wrist becomes the fulcrum point and now I push out with my elbow. An important point, let's turn this way please now. Many will say, yeah, but, well, cross your ankles, please. Many will say, yeah, but what about your arm? I say, what about my arm? Take my arm, please. Yes. Let me give you one more piece of information that will help you tremendously. When this leg comes over top of the shoulder, you want your elbow to go on the front of the hip because people think they got the triangle, but it's important that you put your elbow on top of the hip, and then you grab with both hands. Squeeze your elbows together. Would you finish triangle, please? Or spinning arm lock. So close. So, we have our base and our posture, and then we have a couple of different methods of uncrossing the ankles. Thank you, Sensei. We are halfway there. Stay with me. Part three, the most important part. This is how you position yourself before you pass the guard. This is my favorite way of passing the guard. I'm sorry, this is my favorite position that I use before I pass the guard. Let me show you what that looks like. So I've already got my base and my posture. I've already got the ankles uncrossed. And now my left hand is going to push his knee down. And as I push his knee down, <clears throat> my right elbow is going to make a circle underneath his calf. Don't make the mistake of trying to go under the thigh. It's too heavy. Try and go under the calf. So my elbow comes back and behind me. And then I flare my elbow and put my, uh, his calf on top of my shoulder. Can I have you come back over here on this side, please? The position that I wanna go to is I wanna get rid of the space between my chest and his hamstring. When I do this, Sensei, would you move your hips away? Yes too easy for him to move his hips away. So my goal is gonna to be to take my right knee and put my right knee into his left armpit. And then I put my belly button against his hamstring. And now what pushes forward is my belly button. And I look up. Go ahead and move your hips. This, stay right there please, this is the position that I go to to pass the guard. From this position I have 14 different uh, techniques that I use to pass the guard from. And the pass could be under the leg, the pass could be over the leg, the pass could be around the legs. But this is a dominant position that you go to to stay next to the hips before you try and pass the guard. Does that make sense? I want you to understand that when we first start out with base and posture, that's not a position that you use to pass the guard from. You're too far away from passing the guard. 
This is the position that I want you to get in the habit of going to. So as the leg goes on top of the shoulder, and I'm gonna do this to take the stress off of uh, Al's legs, I am going to come in with no hands and my belly does the work. You feel the pressure on your hamstring? <clears throat> Where I create even more pressure is the right hand grabs a hold of the lapel, this lapel, this lapel, or even worse, the belt. My left hand will go on the inside of the knee and press that all the way to the mat. On a scale of one to 10, what's the pressure feel like? Two. Two. Do you see how my chest faces over here in this direction? I need to take my chest and my head and face Al's face. What's the number now? Mm, seven and a half, eight. Seven and a half and eight. And that's with me on my knees. When I put my left leg up, my left knee up, I'm sorry, and press my left knee into my left elbow, and now I turn and face him. What's the number? It's a 10. It's a 10. Move your hips, please. No. He's not moving anywhere. Thank you. So this is the position I go to, the pass positioning that I use to pass the guard either under the leg or over the leg. And I pass under the leg with uh, 10 different uh, passes for under the leg, and then I do four passes for over the leg. So we have our base and our posture. We have a method of uncrossing the ankle, actually a couple of different methods of uncrossing the ankle. And then number three, this is how we position ourselves before we try and execute a pass. Number four, the actual pass. Uh, many ways to pass the guard under the leg, like I showed you that, like I told you in the last segment, I talked about uh, 10 different ways. Let me show you a personal favorite of mine. And the reason why it's a personal favorite of mine is it works on most everybody. I won't say everybody because there are some of those uh, yogis out there that are just super flexible, but from the flexible people onto the people who are not flexible, this works like a charm. I call this the salsa merengue uh, under the leg guard pass. Uh, sensei, please. So as I get the leg on top of the shoulder, <clears throat> And I put my hand here, elbow next to my ribs, here, elbow next to my ribs, here, elbow next to my ribs. What does the work, and I'm gonna do this on my knees so that you can see it better, is my belly button right now, because I'm facing Sensei Al, my belly button is on the middle of his hamstring. My lower back goes back, I suck my belly in and then I move my belly to the side. Suck my belly in and move my belly to the side. Suck my belly in and move my belly to the side. And then my belly and my chest push the leg off. Did you see me turn the corner? No, there's no need to turn the corner. Did you see me move my legs to the side? No need to move the legs to the side. So as I am, let's turn this way, this. As I am here, my belly sucks in and turns to the side. My belly sucks in a little bit and now I have my belly button on the IT band. And that pushes forward just like my chest and then I look up at the ceiling. And then I go to my guard pass. Thank you. So this is a very simple and efficient way of passing the guard. Uh, we started out first with our base and our posture. Second, we talked about a couple of methods of uncrossing the ankles. Third, we went to a position that we use to control and dominate the person so they can't get away from us, they can't squirm away from us. And then we used our belly and our chest to actually get that leg off. This is my kindergarten, preschool way of teaching people how to pass the guard. There's a lot more to the guard pass than just what I've shared with you here, but I wanted to give you a little taste of how we do the guard passing a little bit differently. 
And then when you add to the technical and mechanical stuff, the 371 training methods that we have in Harris Jiu Jitsu, I think you can see uh, this is a little bit different than uh, what you've seen before. I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, uh, this video. And if you have any questions, please go to my website, RoyHarris.com, and send me an email. And let's talk. Let's do some training.